Hey, how's it going? Today we're going to break down and recreate the synth sounds of Air's La Femme d'Argent using uh, just Ableton Live devices. So this song is incredible. It's a beautiful piece. Um, the two synth sounds that I'm going to recreate are the lead sound that comes in six minutes in and the effect sound that comes in around uh, four and a half minutes in. If you want to listen to those sounds, the link is provided right here and down in the comments. Uh, so let's get into it. So here's my rendition of the synth sound that comes in about six minutes in. So, how to recreate this sound? Well, let's go and create a new track, and I'm going to drag uh, Ableton's Operator into here. And Operator is an interesting synth. It's it's a, it's primarily an FM synthesizer, but you can use it as a subtractive synthesizer. It's kind of got aspects of both. Okay. So the first thing I hear in this sound is is to me my ears obviously uh, pick up uh, very easily that this is a saw waveform being filtered. Okay. So I switched the I clicked on this first voice here, and it's the only one that's turned up, and I chose saw. Okay. And then I went over to the filter, and this is obviously a, um, a, a low-pass filter. Whether it's a 12 or a 24, um, again, this is, I'm not going to try to, you know, speculate on which synth this was. I maybe might, might be an SH-101, might be uh, a Korg MS-20, I'm not really sure. Doesn't matter, because what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the concepts. So what it sounds like to me is that we've got the filter, we're filtering a saw waveform. So this is the saw waveform all the way open. <laughs> Right, so we're going to filter it down a little bit. So we're getting close. We're starting to we're starting to sound like the the tonal basis. So the way that an op, that the operator's oscillator over here, this oscillating saw waveform and the filter uh, play together is kind of uh, you know this is going to get this is going to get us started. This is going to get us close to that sound. So obviously the filter has a little bit of resonance on it to give it some of that warm mid-range. This is what it's like without resonance. Kind of dead and lifeless. When we turn the resonance up a little bit, we're going to go to like 30 or something. Er, er, er. You get that kind of er sound. Now, this sound to me also, when I listen to it, sounds like the filter is fixed. The filter uh, frequency is fixed in one position, um, if not having a little bit of key tracking. But we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to get this kind of fixed filter sound going. Okay, the next thing that I hear is this is coming from a monophonic synthesizer. There are, uh, it can't play in polyphony. There's only one note happening at the same time. So what I'm going to do is first go to this last area um, over here where the uh, volume and tone, this is kind of like the globals of the synth. I'm going to click on the voices and reduce it to one. Okay, I'm going to turn re-trigger off. Okay, and now I've got this one single voice. <laughs> Now, when I'm making a, I, I also like to do a thing where when I play this note and I play this note and I let go of this note, it goes back to the first note. And so the way that you do that in, in operator is you turn on this glide mode. Okay. Now, the other thing about the glide mode that's fun is that you can choose how long it takes to get from one note to another. I'm going to jack that up a little bit and we can get that cool that cool glide sound. Now, the way that this synthesizer was played is that the, they had a little bit of fun with the glide time, the uh, portamento, whatever whatever it was called. In, in Operator, it's called glide. In other synthesizers, it's called portamento. So that's the first control that I want to use. So I'm going to right-click on the top bar, and I'm going to turn this, I'm going to group this, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is I want my push to be able to display the controls that I want to use in this performance when I'm performing with this synth. So I turn on the macro instrument, I go to map, and now I'm going to click on the glide time, okay? And I'm gonna map that to this second controller here, okay? So I'm gonna put the, the glide time at its very lowest at a place that I, that I might wanna have it. I think 50 milliseconds was pretty good. And then the second one, I'm gonna put it a little bit higher, maybe uh, two or three seconds, okay? So now I can, now that's an instant. And now when I turn this knob, I get that really fun glide time. 
okay? And now the next thing that I hear is every once in a while they sneak in a little bit of, uh, of, of pitch modulation, okay? So, so on this LFO, I can turn this LFO on, okay? And instantly the LFO's re-trigger is on. It's kind of annoying that that's always the case. So whenever I... It's always going to start in the same position. So I'm going to turn the re-trigger off, okay? And the next thing is I'm going to, to bring up the amount until I hear how much it's making. So that's kind of like too slow. It's a little drunk. So this, this, uh, this, the modulation they had was a little bit faster. Kind of your classic uh, 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 scary ghost sound. Now this was a subtle thing. They only brought it in just every once in a while. So what I'm going to do is turn on my map control for my macros. I'm going to go over to the amount of the LFO. I'm going to map it to the first control. Okay. And I'm going to just make it so that this macro, even if I turn it all the way up, is only going to give us so much uh, amount of modulation. Okay. So the last thing that I hear in this sound is a little bit of delay. Um, and it's, it's, they, they probably use some really high quality delay. Who knows what? I'm just going to grab a ping pong delay because it's easy and it's got a quick little uh, filter on it. And when I listen to the song, it sounds like the delay that they used is, was in stereo or maybe they panned it a little bit. So this, this, uh, the ping pong filter is nice because it's got just this nice little uh, uh, high pass and low pass, little, I guess you could call it a band pass filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down a little bit so that it's, it's kind of uh, making more lows than highs, okay? And I'm going to turn the dry wet down a little bit. And now we get this. And so now I have control over And now, did you notice when I was playing that, there was a couple blip, 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 blip. The final thing that I would do with this, with this voice is go into the first oscillator, and I would take the attack up just the smallest amount, just so that we can get... We're just going to soften that edge. Just a little bit. Just so we don't get that ta 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 Because if you listen to the original, there really isn't any attack kind of sound on this. This is just a smooth sounding synth, all right? All right, so that's the, uh, that's the lead sound. Now, so the effect sound that comes in at uh, four and a half minutes is a little bit more um, complicated. And, and I instantly, my ears instantly recognized that there is a single square shaped LFO that's running pretty quickly that's affecting multiple things at once. So let's once again grab an operator and drag it into here, okay? And we're gonna, because that's the first thing that hit my brain when I was listening to this, I'm gonna turn the LFO on and I'm gonna turn it on to square mode, okay? So when I listen to, I'm gonna turn the, the, the amount up slowly. That's obviously not fast enough. And the next thing that I recognize is that's obviously not a sine waveform. Again, I think it's a saw waveform. And I, if I had a, if I had a guess at this one, I would say this is almost certainly an uh, MS20 synthesizer making the sound. But um, I'm going to turn the retrigger off, okay? Because I, it, that's not really here nor there in terms of what we're doing. And I'm going to increase the rate. So now we've got kind of a. Now we're getting closer to, to, to what that sound effect sounded like. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to the amount. And, and what you can tell is that as I turn the amount up, the, the, uh, the, the fundamental note that I'm playing eventually gets too scrambled. So listen to this. So, the, so where the, 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 the center of where your ear is hearing that note, after I get past around... Uh, yeah, like 15% amount, it starts to it starts to be hard to hear. So obviously there's some other component going on here. What is that other component? So the, the cool thing about operator and about many synths is that you can take the same LFO and, uh, and have multiple destinations for that same LFO. So what I hear is that not only is the pitch getting changed by the LFO, the, um, 
the filter frequency is also getting changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the filter frequency down a little bit so that I can hear this because if I were to turn that amount up right now, I wouldn't hear much of a change because the filter was already all the way up. So I'm gonna put the filter somewhere in the middle and I'm gonna change the destination for the, the, the second destination for this same square shaped LFO to the filter frequency and I'm gonna leave the, desti uh, the destination amount at 100%. So now let's take a listen. Now we're getting closer to that sound. All right, so we're getting closer. All right, so the next part, let's just do a little bit of housekeeping here. We're gonna, we're gonna once again make this a monophonic synthesizer. I'm gonna uh, limit my voices to one voice at a time. I'm gonna turn the glide on. I'm just gonna, you know, this is a pretty instant thing, so the glide time is really slow. So now we got the. Right? And the next thing I'm noticing is that I'm just gonna open up the release just a little bit for the LFO and for the. The voice just so we don't get that end clip off all right so that's nice and then i'm gonna open up the attack just a little bit here because we don't want that click at the beginning maybe just a little bit more all right and so the next thing that i notice is that when they do the filter sweep this is you know this is essentially the sound that we've got going on here in fact i'm just gonna group this real quick open up my macros and I'm gonna map the filter frequency to that first control here, okay? And it doesn't have to go all the way up to the top because that's not what's going on, so. That's essentially the sound. But what I'm noticing is that when you listen to the recording, at the very beginning when it's just on the root, you get a lot of that low end in there. And so what I'm going to do is, is, a, is an interesting little trick. I'm going to map the resonance control to the filter frequency. And at, at very low filter frequency, when the filter is very low, when the, when the, when the macro control is very low, I'm going to add more resonance. And as it climbs up, I'm going to just leave it like at 20 or something. That way we're going to get a little more low end when I sweep it from the low part. Okay, that way we get that bass in there. All right, and now the final thing that, that I noticed in this sound is that it's not just a saw waveform. There's something else going on, and, and what I believe it to be is a little bit of white noise. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this synth, and I'm going to add some white noise here. I'm going to turn this white noise up a little bit, maybe about the same volume as the other, as the other oscillator. <laughs> And what you'll notice right away is like, wait, that doesn't sound like white noise. And the reason that is, is because operator has these different algorithms for how the oscillators interact with each other. Right now, what's happening is that this oscillator is actually uh, frequency modulating this oscillator. So if I want to disable that, I just have to make it so all four of the oscillators are just going directly to the output in the way that a subtractive synthesizer would be. So if you want to use operator as a subtractive synth, you just click on this algorithm and all of a sudden all four of these oscillators can be sent directly to the filter or whatever. So now when I play it, I should have a nice... Now that sounds to me like, like white noise. So I'm also noticing that this gets a little bit higher pitched. So I'm gonna open up the top of my filter just a little bit in this macro control. Maybe to, yeah, 10, okay. So there, so there we go, we got that second sound. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this was really fun for me to make. Um, if there are other songs you'd like me to do, uh, just go ahead and leave those songs in the comments. If there's uh, iconic synthesizer sounds that you've always wanted to know how they were created, I'd love to break it down for you. Um, like, comment, subscribe. So much love, everyone. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.